like when I was writing Sarah, I was very concerned about, I want to tell you what it smells like, what it looks like, what, what the weather is, what the sky, it's like all this stuff. And I want to control everything. So I make sure you really, really feel everything. But there's this idea of, in your work, if you don't particularize the writing, the readers will particularize it for themselves. Right. I mean, I think that's an intellectual justification that I made after the fact. I think the real truth is that like, I just am not very good at sensing my environment. And so I don't write environments. I don't sensing your environment. Yeah. Like I'm always like thinking, and then I've got to remind myself, like, look around, you know, like what is literally, what space are you literally in? I'm not very attentive to my physical environment. So I don't think when I go to write, that's what I write about because it's not what I pay attention to as I'm living. I feel like in your work, you're very hyper vigilant to what all the emotional cues are. I like what you said, that it allows space for people to put themselves in and and it's kind of timeless because if you're putting grounded like um this coke can or something like that uh it 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 takes me out of whatever i of how i want to lay myself into your work yeah i mean i think like as a reader i'm not very good also and i've never been very good at following descriptions so when a writer is like describing a scene to me I get very frustrated because I can't visualize ever what they're telling me like I just read this great book called The Wall by Marlon Haushofer and she describes this landscape and I'm so frustrated because I can't visualize what she's describing like as much as I try I'm like I don't understand where the marsh is I don't understand how yeah it's in relation to the lowlands so because I cannot perceive that as a reader I don't even bother putting it in for the other readers, because I think they're just going to be frustrated and not be able to visualize what I see. So I'd rather just like leave it as plain as possible because the mind will fill it in. Like if you just say like X, this, this lady's in a room, like the mind will immediately summon a room. Yeah. I, I saw your room. I, and I'm like that too. When, when I'm reading like, Oh my God, there are dense pages. I'm like, I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to fail this. I am going <laughs> to yeah. fuck this up. I can't. Yeah. I, you know, in, in all the, the fantasy novels where they have like the graph of where that is or whatever, and <laughs> it's like, I, even with those, doesn't matter. I can't even keep it together. I can't either. I don't know. Maybe no one can. Maybe it's just pretending. No, no, no. There are these dudes who grew up playing like, like they started with Risk. That went right, from right. Stratego to Risk to like the <laughs> supersonic board games. Those games, I hated those games. And for me, it's like Game of Thrones. They're still all like Kamakacha is right next to wherever the fuck Madagascar. I don't even know. They're still like very connected. It's like Game of Thrones. You just walk up there, and it's like. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I can't do that either. But um, but I'm impressed when people do that. I don't know if I'm impressed when people do that. I think it's, I don't know if that impresses me. Okay. When they do it and it's not excessive, it's not like they're showing off. And I I think there's a happy medium. Yeah. Your work is very vivid. Like I always feel like I'm in a place and I can, I, I, I don't feel like I'm failing the test. I feel like I'm <laughs> in a place that you are describing. I don't feel like, Oh, shit, I'm, I can't get the topography of this right. You know, I think there's something also about like, my brain like makes everything very small. So like, if you're describing a parking lot, like I can see a parking lot. It's just hard for me to see a kingdom. Like My brain can't like make that vast of a space in it. It can't visualize that vast of a space. Were you ever into sci-fi? No, me neither. Well, no, that's not true. I was into like Philip K. Dick, but that was more like the idea stuff when he would describe all, you know. Right. I think Kurt Vonnegut is the closest I've ever gotten to loving. I wouldn't even call him sci-fi, but I think he's the closest to sci-fi I've ever gotten. 
I'll never forget we were we were on Deadwood and there had been an interview with Vonnegut and he was still alive. He was on his way out and he was just talking about how the world was going to end and it was hopeless and and Milch, um, the creator of Deadwood, and he was just like, you know, man, that's so fucked up. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but it was like, fuck him. It's it's the idea of like, I can't imagine. I can't conceive of the world without me going on without me. So it's all, I'm going to just say it's doomed no matter what it's over. Right. It's like the grief of uh, Mira losing her father. It's it to me ties into the grief of, of our losing our planet. Totally. And I think one of the things that I felt in my own experience of grief was that there was like a lot of wonder and beauty in it I guess what I'm interested in terms of of in your your book you you talk about um the need for for turning things into art that um there's that page 151 can you read that that part about the first draft of the world yeah from are you sad yeah to where where did you want me to read to just just that paragraph. Oh, okay. Are you sad to be living in the first draft, shoddily made, rushed, exuberant, malformed? No, you are proud to be strong enough to be living here now, one of God's expendable soldiers in the first draft of the world. There's some pride in having been created to make a better world come. There's some pride in being the ones who are made to be thrown out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so what went into writing getting to that I know your question I understand yeah. what you're asking good please I just think like in some ways I can't feel bad I, I don't like feeling bad so I would rather turn the bad thing into something beautiful so it's just that it's like we all you know, have the unbearable feelings. And I just, I don't want to feel bad and sad. So I want to just, in writing, I'm just like, well, how can I transform this into something that I don't have to feel bad and sad about? Like, how can I transform this situation into something that makes me feel connected to other people, that there is a purpose in being alive. There's a purpose in being alive now. There's beauty in it. You know, there's like valor. I'd much rather feel that. Valor. I would rather feel that all of us alive today are valorous 